Nathostomes are the first animals with jaws, they are the dominant vertebrates today. In addition with jaws, they have teeth and a well-developed head. However, placoderms, a group of heavily armored fishes, don't possess teeth but the huge bones that make up their armor serve as sharp teeth in their jaws. Brindabellispis skull was flattened with the eyes facing upwards on top, its nostrils came out of the corners of its eye sockets, and its jaws were positioned very far forward. It also had a long flat snout packed full of sensory nerves, sort of like the bill of the modern platypus but using a modified form of the pressure-sensing lateral line system instead of electroreception. It was probably some sort of bottom feeder, using its bill to feel around on the seafloor for small prey, and there may even have been a longer and wider soft tissue extension to its sensitive snout, giving it even more of a duck-like shape. Ramandina has been heavily researched as it shows signs of having extremely primitive teeth, which structurally share characteristics of both dermal tubercles and the teeth of modern and fossil nathostomes. Although they are known to be relatively small especially when compared to some large predatory placoderms of the time, it is still thought to be carnivorous due to the tooth-like structures on its nathal and supragnathal plates. Unlike most other placoderm orders, Gemuendina had armor made up of a mosaic of unfused bony plates and scales. Because their armor was so fragile, few intact examples have survived in the fossil record. It did not have the characteristic tooth plates of placoderms. Instead, it had star-shaped tubercle scales that allowed it to seize, then swallow fish and other animals that swam too close with its mouth. The Antiarchs form the second most successful group of placoderms after the Arthrodires in terms of numbers of species and range of environments. Yunnanolepes are confirmed to have a unique organ called the Chang's apparatus, which is an internal cavity with an external opening within the suture of the anterior dorsal lateral plate and the anterior ventral lateral plate. The body of Bothriolepis was covered in a series of overlapping bony plates called dermal plates. These plates provided protection against predators and served as a defense mechanism. It had well-developed pectoral and pelvic fins, which enabled it to move and maneuver in the water. These fins were supported by internal bony structures. It inhabited freshwater environments and was likely a bottom-dwelling fish that fed on small invertebrates and organic matter found in the sediment. Its flattened head and downward-facing mouth suggest a specialized feeding strategy. One of the most notable features of Microbrachius was its specialized pelvic fins. These fins were modified into a pair of long, finger-like structures that were likely used for grasping and holding onto objects or during mating. It is famous for its unique reproductive strategy. Fossil evidence suggests that males possessed a modified pelvic fin, known as a clasper, which was used for internal fertilization. It is important in our understanding of fish evolution. Its unique pelvic fin adaptations and reproductive strategy provide insights into the early stages of internal fertilization and the diversification of reproductive strategies in vertebrates. Fossils of pterichthyodes showing eyes positioned on the direct of the head in a ventrally flattened trunk shield suggest that it was a bottom dweller, living at the bottom of lakes, where it might have crawled using its pectoral appendages. It has also been theorized that it used these appendages to bury itself. It would have fed by browsing shallower areas of the lake bed for decaying detritus. Linaspis had a distinct, somewhat flattened head with large, forward-facing eyes. It had a unique facial configuration, with a pair of large, 
crescent-shaped plates extending from the sides of the head. It lived in marine environments during the early Devonian period. It likely inhabited shallow seas and coastal regions. It was likely a predator, feeding on smaller organisms in its environment. The precise diet is not well understood, but it probably consisted of small invertebrates. Cambalotus has very short spinal plates, and is unusual in having a high dorsal spine formed by three median dorsal plates. The tooth plates are very robust and the upper plate has a high anterior spine. Its fossil remains have been found preserved in perfect three-dimensional form in Australia. Materpissus is particularly notable for its reproductive adaptations. Fossil evidence suggests that it was viviparous, meaning it gave birth to live offspring instead of laying eggs. Inside the body of a female, embryos were found in a series of sac-like structures called placoderm tubercles. The embryos found were at different stages of development, indicating that the fish had a prolonged gestation period. This suggests a complex reproductive strategy, possibly involving internal fertilization. It has provided valuable evidence for the existence of complex reproductive strategies in early vertebrates. Like other placoderms, Philolepus had a heavily armored body. Its head and body were covered in thick bony plates, providing protection against predators. It is named for its leaf-like appearance. The bony plates on its body had a flattened, leaf-shaped structure, giving it a distinctive appearance. It likely inhabited shallow seas and coastal regions. Unlike the Renanida, the armor of the Philolepids were made of whole plates, rather than numerous tubercles and scales, and unlike the Pedalecthiida, the components of the comparatively wide mouth are known. The Philolepids are considered to have been blind, as the orbits for the eyes are extremely small, so much so as to suggest that the eyes were vestigial, and that they were placed on the sides of the head, as opposed to visually oriented bottom-dwelling predators, like, say stargazers or flatfish which have the eyes placed high on top of the head. Incisoscutum is important in the study of early vertebrates as well-preserved fossilized embryos have been found in female specimens and ossified pelvic claspers found in males. Like in Materpissus, this shows that viviparity and internal fertilization was common amongst these primitive jawed vertebrates. Groenlandaspis was a moderately sized river-dwelling placoderm and its bony armor formed a sort of pyramid shape with wing-like projections at its sides, a structure that would have acted as a hydrofoil and made it an efficient swimmer. It couldn't gape its mouth open particularly wide, it may have been a bottom feeder, grubbing around in muddy riverbeds and using its small but strong jaws to crush hard-shelled prey. Preserved pigment cells in its fossils indicate that it was red on top and silvery white on its underside, camouflaging it in the murky silty waters of the ancient Arctic rivers. Turisaspis had a flattened head with small eyes positioned on the sides. It also had a thoracic shield, which was a specialized bony plate that covered the upper part of its body, providing additional protection. It inhabited marine environments during the late Devonian period. Its feeding habits are not well known, as its fossil record is limited. However, based on its jaw structure and related species, it is believed to have been a benthic predator. Rolfosteus had sharp, bony plates on its mouth which formed a turtle-like beak for cutting prey to pieces. Its most unusual feature was its highly elongated rostrum, which may have been used to enhance its sense of smell as well as increase its hydrodynamic streamlining, making it well adapted to be a pelagic pursuit predator. Its fast jaw movement and jaw morphology allowed it to effectively capture prey and swallow them whole. Cacosteus had a joint between the armor of the body and skull. It also had an internal joint between its neck vertebrae and the back of the skull, 
allowing for the mouth to be opened even wider. Along with the longer jaws, this allowed it to feed on fairly large prey. The up and down movement of the skull also allowed for more water to be pumped through the gills. Possibly, the creature supplemented its diet with organic material filtered from mud using the gills. As with all other arthrodires, it had bony dental plates embedded in its jaws, forming a beak. Dunkleostus was one of the largest known placoderms, reaching impressive sizes. It was a formidable predator, it likely had a carnivorous diet, feeding on smaller fish and marine organisms. Its jaws and powerful bite force suggest that it was an efficient predator, capable of capturing and consuming prey with ease. It had a streamlined body shape, well suited for swimming. Its large, rounded head had no neck, and its body tapered towards the rear, ending in a heterocircle tail, which means the upper lobe of the tail was larger than the lower lobe. Recent studies about Dunkleostus show that it was shorter and bulkier than previously think. Unlike its relative, the various species of Titanicthes had small, ineffective-looking mouthplates that lacked a sharp cutting edge. It is assumed that it was a filter feeder that used its capacious mouth to swallow schools of small, anchovy-like fish, or possibly krill-like zooplankton, and that the mouthplates retained the prey while allowing the water to escape as it closed its mouth. A study has since confirmed this assumption as its jaws are functionally closer to that of filter feeders like basking sharks, and it appears to have developed from benthic durophagists that became pelagic suspension feeders. Brocoidmones is a freshwater predatory animal that may have hunted prey similarly to modern knife fish, relying on stealth and capturing it with a short lunge. If its pre-pelvic finlets were capable of movement, they may have aided the animal in making subtle motions during a stealthy approach. The large caudal fin may also support ambush hunting, as they are typically used for rapid acceleration over short distances. Ishnacanthus had a long body covered in mosaic-like scales. They possess highly advanced, spindle-shaped bodies that were thought to have made them swift swimmers. This fish had two narrow dorsal spines, one either side of and just behind its head. It was a predatory fish that possessed a mouth with very small teeth on the lower jaw. The feature all acanthodians share in common is the fact that massive spines, formed of dentine, support all fins other than the caudal fins. Diplocanthus is most commonly associated with deposits traditionally interpreted as fresh water. One of the distinguishing features of Diplocanthus was its large spines. It had a pair of prominent spines on its back, near the front of its body. These spines likely served as a defense mechanism and may have also had a role in courtship displays. Acanthode's body was elongate and had a pair of pectoral fins, an unpaired dorsal fin far back on the body, with an unpaired long ventral pelvic fin and an anal fin on the underside of the body which like other acanthodians were supported by stiff spines at their front edges. It had no teeth and had long gill rakers. Because of this, it is presumed to have been a suspension feeder, filtering plankton from the water. A specimen was so well preserved that traces of its eye tissue were sufficient to establish that it had both rod and cone photoreceptor cells, suggesting that it was capable of color vision. The popular name spiny sharks of the Acanthodians is because they were superficially shark-shaped, with a streamlined body, a strongly upturned tail, and stout, largely immovable bony spines supporting all the fins except the tail, hence. However, they are not true sharks, 
their close relation to modern cartilaginous fish can lead them to be considered stem sharks. They had a cartilaginous skeleton, but their fins had a wide, bony base and were reinforced on their anterior margin with a dentine spine. Chiracanthus was a deep-bodied acanthodian about 30 centimeters in length. It had a blunt head, upturned tail, and fins protected by spines. Unlike many other acanthodians, it had one, solitary dorsal fin. Chiracanthus swam at mid-depth in lakes and rivers, seizing small prey in its gaping jaws. Climatius was an active swimmer, judging from its powerful caudal fin and abundant stabilizing fins, and probably preyed on other fish and crustaceans. Its lower jaw was lined with sharp teeth which were replaced when worn, but the upper jaw had no teeth. It had large eyes, suggesting that it hunted by sight. Gyracanthus had a robust and elongated body. Its most distinctive features were its large and robust spines. These spines, found along its back and fins, were long and sharp, serving as a defensive mechanism against predators. It inhabited both freshwater and marine environments during the Carboniferous period. Like other acanthodians, it became extinct by the end of the Carboniferous period. Changes in environmental conditions and competition with other fish groups likely played a role in their extinction. Acanthodians are noted for their large spines which may have initially developed for defense against the mouths and throats of larger predators. However, some of these spines are so large and oddly formed that they may well have served a display function to allow an individual to recognize others of its own species. The key feature of Parexis is the incredibly enlarged spine that rises up in front of the first dorsal fin. 